The developers making Skull and Bones at Ubisoft Singapore have already mentioned in interviews that we may be bumping ships with some pirates who actually sealed the Indian Ocean during the Golden Age of Piracy. Unlike the Caribbean, however, the pirates of the Indian Ocean aren't as frequently portrayed in pop culture. In fact, most of us probably wouldn't be able to name a famous Indian Ocean pirate whatsoever. Well, you might be surprised actually to hear that some of these Indian Ocean pirates were just as fabled and as wealthy, if not more so, than their Caribbean counterparts. One of these pirates was John Bowen. John Bowen was of Creole descent, which very simply means that he was the son of European immigrants. Typically the term Creole means that someone is partially or fully descended from white European colonial settlers. Their language, culture and racial origin represents the creolization resulting from the interaction and adaptation of colonial era immigrants from Europe with non-European peoples, climates and cuisines. It sounds pretty intense. Don't worry, that was probably the heaviest part of the video, it gets a little bit lighter from here. Bowen sealed the seas with other notable pirates of the time, like Nathaniel North, who I believe has one of the most amazing pirate names I've heard in a while, and George Booth, who was actually once Bowen's captain. Over a four year period, John Bowen would go on to steal, loot and plunder £170,000 worth of goods before retiring. Now, if you don't think that sounds like a lot, remember that's 18th century currency. In today's currency, that works out at a staggering 13.5 million pounds. But how did John Bowen become such a successful pirate? And with all his success, why did he decide to retire? Born in Bermuda, Bowen later moved to the Carolina colony in what would later become the United States of America. Seeking employment, most likely, rather than adventure, he joined the crew of an English ship as a petty officer. But shortly after setting sail, the ship he was a crew member of was attacked by French pirates. Bowen and some other crew members were taken captive by the French pirates and they set sail across the Atlantic Ocean towards Madagascar, most likely to sell the crew in a foreign port. Before they could reach port, however, the French ship ran aground on the south side of Madagascar. Bowen and the other English prisoners managed to escape and seize the ship's longboat before sailing 45 miles to the safe refuge of St Augustine. Here Bowen would rest for just over a year before he finally decides to become a pirate himself. He joined the crew of William Reed, the captain of a 60 ton brigantine ship and was elected sailing master by the crew. This would make John Bowen responsible for the navigation of the ship and shows that Bowen commanded at least some respect and admiration from Reed's men in order to be voted into such an important role on the deck. Bowen would later return to Madagascar and join the crew of George Booth. Bowen served under Booth until 1700 when Booth was killed by Arabs off the coast of Zanzibar while negotiating for the resupplying of his ship. This was when John Bowen really came into his own. George Booth had captured a 450 ton, 50 gun slave ship called the Speaker in 1699. On Booth's deathbed, Bowen took command of the ship. I wasn't able to find out how he took captaincy, however given the fact he had been voted as sailing master while under the captaincy of William Reed, it is likely safe to say that Bowen was looked upon to be an experienced sailor, at least who commanded the respect of the men. During his captaincy of the Speaker, he had some initial success. He attacked a 13-strong fleet of Moorish vessels and managed to come out victorious. A number of the vessels, however, did escape under the cover of darkness, but Bowen and his crew came away with approximately £100,000 worth of loot. Capitalising on this initial success, Bowen attacked an English East Indiaman in 1701 off the coast of Malabar. Even though Bowen attacked trading vessels like the East Indiaman vessel, he was still allowed to trade in local ports. In fact, Bowen was so brazen, he actually towed the vessel into the port of Calicoon and sold her in three parts to local merchants. His initial success though eventually wore off, and in late 1701, not long after capturing the English East India Trading Company vessel, his ship the Speaker ran aground in Mauritius. After three months, he and his remaining crew managed to save up enough money to buy a sloop which they converted into a brigantine, ships notable for their speed and manoeuvrability. Bowen continued his journey towards Madagascar and upon arrival he actually established a pirate haven, building a town and fort at Maritan. 
Bowen continued his pirate career for another few years, managing to capture, plunder and repurpose other much larger ships. After 1703, Bowen met with his sealing partners and divided up the plunder. He and 40 others then left his ship the Defiant and made for Madagascar to retire and live in peace. Within six months, Bowen died of an unspecified intestinal disease and was buried on Bourbon, now modern day Reunion, a small island off the coast of Madagascar. This is one story of many from the pirates that sealed the Indian Ocean. If you've enjoyed this video, do be sure to let me know down in the comments. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then why not subscribe to be kept up to date with when new videos go live. I'll be covering Skull and Bones as well as Sea of Thieves on the run up to their release, so if those are two games that you're excited for, then you'll fit right in here at the channel. In the meantime though, I hope you're all having a great week, I'll speak to you all soon.